Mr. Dylan, give us an idea of the BSM Group. What would you say? It's a multinational company or a large family business? Yeah, thank you very much for, uh, first of all, for having us. Just a really brief introduction. So, my name is Jeroen Dele. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of BSM. Um, I think we are both. Our roots go back a long time. Um, on the ship owning side, uh, for about 150 years. Be precise to 1883. So we've been a long time a ship owner, and then about 90 years later, in the in the early 1970s, we started our first third-party ship management services uh, out of Cyprus. Um, this year, we're actually celebrating our 50th anniversary. Um, so, on the ship oh, ship management side, we are very global. We have ship management centers in 11 uh, locations. We have crew service centers in 25 countries. So I think we are both. We are very much a family company with traditional family values, um, a long-term vision, a high focus on, on long-term relations. Uh, we're not in there in the market for short gains, but really a long-term vision. Uh, and on the other side, we have a global group structure ensuring the same services, uh, corporate governance to... Uh, mm. Yeah, to deliver a high-level service to our clients. Yeah. I think a bit of both. Both. Okay. Mr. Theofanos, could you save the latest uh, news for the BSM uh, LAS office and uh, your activities? Yeah. So, thanks for having us, first of all. So, it's a good opportunity during Posidonia to have also our uh, CEO here. So, uh, BSM Greece, as you know well, we were established in 2005. So, for the last uh, 17 years, we have a steady growth. So I'm very proud to say that uh, last year was a fantastic year for us. So we almost doubled our fleet. Uh, we managed to uh, get more LNGs under management, and uh, that's from the first-class companies here in Greece. And not only, we have clients from China, we have clients now from Singapore, and uh, clients from UK. Uh, and um, we have a further expansion for the next two years, basically three years, until 2025. Uh, we have signed the contracts already and the expansion is going to be uh, much, much further. So, uh, I believe that uh, the last 17 years uh, teach us here in Greece how to deal with Greek owners. So, we are the first company established here in Greece and we are very proud of that. So, we are the first to uh, uh, try to open an office and we managed to stay here. Uh, contrary to the, some other friends yes. that they didn't manage to stay in Greece, so and also you moved to a new biggest uh, office. Yeah, yeah. It's so a very, very beautiful basically building. Basically, due to the expansion, we had to uh, move to new premises so that uh, we had to employ uh, more people in uh, in, the, in our company here, and uh, certainly we had to move to new premises that there is reason you see. Yes. Our um, I want to stay a little bit more in this um, topic, and um, uh, Mr. Theophanos, what do you believe that uh, BSMLAS um, uh, offers to the Greek maritime industry that has uh, helped uh, you, you achieve the um, uh, notable growth of your fleet over the years? So, first of all, I think that our results, the operations, and etc., uh, speaks uh, themselves. So, uh, we managed to establish a good reputation here in Greece. Um, we reach a level where we don't do marketing anymore, but clients come to us directly, and that's because of the reputation that we managed to build. We have uh, ships under management of uh, different sectors, and, uh, so we have uh, bulk carriers here in Greece, we have containers, we have LNGs, we have chemical tankers, LPGs, and uh, we are becoming uh, the number one third party managers in LNGs worldwide. And uh, that's the reason we managed to attract also. A client from abroad, so from Singapore, China, UK. I think that um, our success was one, first of all, it was our team here in Greece. So you can easily recruit uh, professionals that they know the industry. We have a number of Greek uh, offices on board the ship so that they want to move up ashore. So we have a program called uh, Seafarers Coming Ashore. 
So we try to implement that in our office as well. And we manage through the years to understand better the requirements of the Greek uh, ship owners here. And we uh, fine tune our operations so that uh, we perform better. So um, what we do is that uh, we manage to incorporate the Greek mentality on how to run the ships. And don't forget that we are ship owners as well. And the goals are the same. So what we want to do is to keep our customers and all the stakeholders happy, satisfied with zero losses in everything in our operations. Uh, we managed to build a very good uh, team here, especially uh, for uh, LNGs. It was um, a successful uh, uh, attempt that we had to uh, establish an LNG center here in Greece and within the group, basically. We have, uh, we run ships from uh, Greece, LNGs, and also from the uh, UK and, and uh, from Germany. And we started now gradually running ships from Singapore as well, LNGs, yeah. Maybe to chip in, I think one other aspect of third party management, I think that's in particular here in Greece very important, is the flexibility that we can offer. The Greek ship owners, they, particularly in the current market, there's a lot of S&P business going on, people are selling and buying ships and we can offer a certain level of flexibility, we can quickly respond, take ship into management. Sometimes for short term, people want to sell again, uh, and that is a level of flexibility with the skill of our organization we can offer that maybe is difficult to accommodate for smaller ship owners. If they reduce a ship, uh, the fleet significantly, that would give challenges in their shore organization. So I think there's another element that we as a ship, as a third party ship manager, manager can, can tailor for. It's very interesting. And there's something from my side I have to uh, mention that, uh, uh, I mean, it's not one man show here. So we have an excellent team, and our team was the one that managed to bring more business, uh, more business in. So we are really proud that we have uh, a really good team. Now, uh, Mr. Dillon, I would like to address the hot um, issues of shipping, such as uh, decarbonization and uh, environmental regulations. What is, uh, B what is BSM doing in this direction? Yeah, these are indeed very important topics um, and challenging topics for, yeah. for everybody in the industry and not just as managers, as operators, but charters, all the stakeholders and ultimately even the, the customers, ourselves as, as consumers, um, because the prices will go up. Um, we have started years ago to to set up systems and we are very much IT driven so automation is critical for us. Um, we started years ago here actually in Greece uh, with developing digital twins we call them of each ship. We model them and we, co we compare operational results with uh, the, th the supposed theoretical um, results that mm -hmm. ships should achieve. We, have, we are building up our capacities, our teams to monitor ships on the spot, so timely reporting from the ships um, and preparation as well or prediction so that we can anticipate higher consumption and advise owners going forward and mm -hmm. operators on, on optimizing the route or the speed. Um, so there's quite a bit we are doing in that front and as you can imagine with the global fleet of 450 ships or so in full management, the amount of data required, for example for EU MRV, is something that we cannot manage without automation. Mm -hmm. The only way forward, in our opinion, is to make the process as smooth as possible, one, date, one point of entry on the ship of data, and then the system validated. We have um, created um, so-called APIs, so integration with the software of DMV, our verifier, and therefore the, the, the least intervention of people uh, involved. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a process we continue continuously try to evolve. Um, on decarbonization further, on the owning side, very challenging. Everybody, I think every owner globally is asking themselves, what should I do? Um, we are asking ourselves as ship owners the same question. Um, as ship managers, with our vast experience in the different segment, I think we are very well positioned to advise owners, to um, give them the need for example, in shipyard selection, in, in technical advice, commercial advice we could provide. 
Um, and we recently, or last year, we took in the first dual fuel LNG ships, for example. Um, but we have 45 years of experience in managing LNG transportation. So we have a vast experience with LNG as a commodity. Um, and that helps us to prepare training courses, to prepare the crew and so on. So I think we're very well positioned to... Yes. Yeah. Um, I want to stay a little bit um, here and uh, more specifically for the new buildings and what uh, fuel they will use. Uh, what solution do you follow or what do you suggest to your customers? I think it's very much dependent on the type of trade and ship that um, an owner has in mind or an operator. I don't think there's a one size fits all solution. LNG as a fuel is becoming more popular and is definitely something that will grow further and um, will in certain segments, in certain cases, uh, have a good case. Having said that, the current gas prices are high and suddenly ships traditionally or who were supposed to burn LNG or gas are now operating at, at, at MGO again. Um, we are ready, we are getting ourselves ready for ammonia, for, for yeah. other um, fuel types. We are uh, involved heavily in different industry organizations and technical working groups on the crewing side, on the, on the advisories of setting best practices. So on different levels, I think we, yeah. Yeah, we try to, to support it. Mr. Stefanos, mm -hmm. Greek ship owners concern a lot about that, especially those who want to um, build new ships. Look, uh, the, the biggest problem, I think, is the crewing. So we need to have uh, trained staff, uh, trained officers to join the officers. So we, within BSM, we have uh, five training schools. So, and we train our people. We have a certain program that we follow. We monitor the career path of our junior officers until they reach the higher position on board the ship. And I think one of the biggest problems that we have to start planning well in advance for people that they want to invest in, do it fuel or LNG or um, any other kind of uh, new technology uh, ships. I think that um, they have to pay a lot of attention on the training and they need to start planning that ahead. One year sometimes is not enough, so we need to plan everything well in advance and with the big shortage that we expand in the industry within the next couple of years, I mean, there are reports uh, stating that uh, we'll, be, we'll have a shortage of 90,000 uh, offices, a shortage of 90,000 offices in by 2026. So for us, I think this is the most important issue. All the rest are, can easily be addressed, but training, Yes. and uh, have uh, well-trained people on board the ship is more important. More important. Okay. Now, uh, the Greek-owned fleet of LNG uh, ships is growing. At the same time, our region is uh, uh, being transformed into an energy hub. Uh, can you uh, provide some services about the new market that developed here in our area? So, first of all, we are very proud that we are part of this expansion of the LNGs and uh, as we well know Greeks are always uh, showing the path to the rest of the industry and especially on the LNGs. I mean they invested uh, some years ago and now they enjoy uh, the good market and everything so they were ahead of the uh, industry basically in this respect. So uh, what we did here in Greece as special as BSM we had collaboration with first class companies, newcomers in LNG we help them to enter into the LNGs by having secondaries in our office as well. And gradually they transfer the technical management, following up with the crew management with in the future. But uh, as I said, we are really proud that we contribute as BSM to this expansion of LNG business here in Greece. And from the news or rumors that we heard around is that more Greek companies would like to invest in LNGs. So, and for me, I believe that LNG will be the future for the next at least 20, 30 years. So before we uh, find alternative uh, ways to run uh, our yes. ships. Uh, Mr. Dillon, tell us um, uh, about the offshore activities of uh, BSM Group. Yeah, we've been, obviously as BSM, we've been active in various sectors. We, we have basically cover the whole range of the cruise ships, uh, in, and 
we are doing well in, in offshore. We have about 25 years of experience, I would say, in different segments. Um, we are not into the heavy offshore drilling. Um, that is something that we have not addressed. But we are doing off surface offshore um, vessels, so offshore wind maintenance ships, the traditional PSV anchor handlers. Um, we manage uh, large accommodation ships in different areas in the world. So from different offices we can provide. Um, we also, on the technical side, can provide consultancy services, conversion work. So we have a good experience uh, with that. Um, the offshore market is like maybe the cruise segment and the energy. They have their specific needs. Mm -hmm. So we try to tailor to, to the needs of the clients there. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as we already uh, discussed about uh, and talked uh, about Seafire, sailors back in the spotlight, either with a pandemic or uh, now with a Ukrainian uh, uh, crisis. How do you handle this uh, situation? What solution do you provide? Yeah, like Theo mentioned earlier, I think crewing is going to be and is the major challenge within the industry. There will be a huge shortage of, of senior officers going forward and we already see this. Um, the pandemic has created huge challenges for us as an organization. Um, having said that, we, because we have crew service centers in many countries, we manage to accommodate this. We have seen a transition away from Chinese seafarers to other nationalities because of the challenges to bring them back home or send them back to the ships. Um, I'm seeing a significant reduction to about 30% to what we had in the peak of the before the pandemic. Um, now the Ukrainian crisis, um, we also see a transition there. Um, the number of Russians we have on board currently is over 1,000 and this is increasing. The Ukrainians which are stuck in the Ukraine, we cannot bring them back on board. So we slowly see a, a slight reduction in the U number of Ukrainians on board. Having said that, we have we make tremendous efforts in neighboring countries of the Ukraine to accommodate our seafarers, their families, um, in particular in Romania and, uh, and in Poland. Our colleagues there do a, f a phenomenal job and, and very heartbreaking stories. But on the other side, it's very good as an organization that we can provide this support. And here in Greece as well. Yeah, yeah. So what we did, we first of all, as a group, we have a fund to, uh, we raise a fund within the group so to assist our uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, colleagues mm -hmm. and their families as well. So here in Greece, we have a, a team that uh, they try to find accommodation, uh, even to employ some people that are sure. And um, this is what we try to show to our seafarers. So we know that uh, we have the mental issue now. I mean, with people that they cannot sign off or people that uh, they couldn't go home. So we provide uh, assistance in this respect as well. And um, basically, uh, the office in Greece is very, because we always had a lot of Ukrainians on our ships, so we have very close relations with them, and we try to assist mm -hmm. as much as possible. So we have the issue with the payments of the salaries we had um, when the crisis started, but now we manage to mm -hmm. pay the salaries without any issues to both Ukrainians and Russians. Uh, something that we have seen is that the shift from uh, uh, East European offices, especially, and not for ratings, towards India. So we've got a lot of requests for people mm -hmm. that they traditionally uh, employ Ukrainians on board their ships to look for alternative markets. So when uh, the issue is that a number of companies shifted to India, which means that uh, we have uh, an increase on the salaries. Mm -hmm. Uh, something to mention from our side because it's not only the um, near future but also we're looking a little bit ahead. Uh, we have established a training school in Ghana together with the local university there and we try to uh, train a Ghanaian crew. We have a cadet scheme and also office scheme there because I think that uh, in the long run we have to find alternative resources to employ people and Africa is a country that I believe that is the future. So and the demographics yeah. in Africa are yeah. really really positive. Yeah. There's a very young community, English is, is good, um, people getting good education 
and we really believe that West Africa is, is going to be the crew source of the future. Mm -hmm. um, and we have, yeah, as Theo mentioned, since 2012 we, uh, we are present in Ghana, we have a very strong relation uh, with local maritime university and we're building up the pool slowly from cadets and we now see the first senior officers coming into, into the pool. We have over 300 Ghanaians on board already. Um, and slowly build them up. And these are really BSM people that we have been training um, and going forward with the challenges in other countries. The Philippines is, we have, obviously it's the biggest pool we have, but we do see challenges there. China has its challenges. So I think the, the, the West African uh, pool pool is, is an interesting one that we believe strongly in to support us going forward and accommodate the needs of the shipping industry going forward. Yeah, and uh, something to mention from my side as well, I'm pleased to see that uh, Greeks, uh, the, the schools here in Greece are full and we've got a lot of, uh, uh, a number of applications from juniors, from cadets to join our LNG fleet. So it's good though that the schools are full uh, and they all want to join LNGs, that's a bad thing. Yeah. But I think that the number of uh, and juniors, cadet scheme, etc. So we're going to have a number of Greek offices in the future, and that would be is it is good for the economy as well here in Greece. Of course. Why is uh, the BSM um, uh, group uh, considered competitive in new management, in crew management? Um, well, I think part of it is scale. Um, as I referred to earlier, we can accommodate the changes that owners need um, buying, selling ships with a large crew pool we are able to accommodate um, one two ships extra on the scale of things doesn't make that much of a difference um, plus the different segments we cover so with the significant increase for example in LNG to come again back on that segment what we have done is tr uh, create our in-house courses to transfer people from the traditional LPGs for example cross train them to the LNG people from the wet side, from chemicals, to prepare them for LPGs. So we can do a lot of cross-training internally um, yeah, to manage these industry changes, to accommodate fleet growth, um, and accommodate also on the seafarer side their interest. Is it LNG? Is it a more bulky person? I would like to work on a container ship. Mm -hmm. um, so with our size, I think we can do that very, very well. Yeah, and uh, if I may add something from my side, I mean, with a pool of 22,000 uh, uh, people on board our ships and uh, with a presence in 25 countries where we employ people, and all these offices are belong to BSM, so we don't use uh, third party agencies. So we train the people, we have five schools already. Mm -hmm. So, and there is a training program where we have to follow, we monitor the career of our officers we spend a lot of money, the, 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 the budget that we have for training is huge without um, charging that, uh, uh, I mean, the, the training that we do is at cost. We don't charge any fees to our... It's not a profit. A, a profitable center, yes. So, yes. And I think the, the key word there is training. So we need to invest in training, and if you invest in training, then you can see the results. Yes. I mean, people that they do not training, and then they experience an incident, they can see that it's much more expensive to have an incident than to train your people. So some people, they say that, why do you train all these people? They might go away. But what I always say is that I prefer to have trained people on my ship, even though they move away. Yes. Tim, do you want something to add, I think? That's fine. That's fine. So thank you very much, Marcos. Thank you very much. So, thank you much. Um, I hope that you enjoy Macedonia. Yes. So uh, we see it's uh, good after two, three years. Now we didn't have any events exactly. to see so much, so many people coming around. So Macedonia is always a big event, a worldwide shipping event. And I think that uh, so far we're doing yes. well. So congratulations to all those organizers. Yes. Yes. And also to clients and stakeholders here in the industry with yes. the events that they do on a daily basis.